Yo, it's Booth, standing solo. Big up, Loot the Mic TV, bridging the gap. Yo, so Booth, um, we've come down to Torquay and uh, just want to know basically what's the scene like in Torquay at the moment? Well, everyone say like it's quiet and that, but for the small size of it, I think there's a lot of talent. There's loads of people doing like high quality music basically and pushing it and doing their own thing. No one's like, because obviously you got competing with cities and that. I'm not saying like these guys are like world class nothing, but they're doing their own thing and their own styles and they're like taking what they know and putting their own little twist on it. Definitely. All sorts of people. Um, how do you work with your own music yourself within like how is it is it easy to get your music out in Torquay like have you got a big following here and well it's it's do you know what? it's like it's hard to I think it's hard anyway to get anywhere anyone to listen to your music if they don't know you and they don't know your music so like everyone that it's how much easy but everyone that listens to it I'm like I'm grateful for them to listen to it because obviously it's something that I do and like someone's taking three four minutes out of their time to check it out. And like, that's, that's big. You don't get like, you don't get like people going to see people's brickwork and that. You, like stand there for three, four minutes. Oh yeah, that's good. They don't get that. So like, the music is big. So like, that's why I like, that decent. So doing like, when I push it out, get it online. Try not to um. We'll say like I'm doing what, something for the album. I record like, say three or four remixes before I work out what I want to, even though the beat's there already, I'll do like three or four remixes of something and then I'll work out what I want to, how I want to sound and then I'll get the tone of the track right, you know? And then I'll push it out and fucking push out the remixes which is similar to it and then see what kind of reaction they get. If they ain't getting nothing, the track's getting, <laughs> the track's getting dashed, that's it. I say you're known for your work rate, like the, the amount of songs that you've got in your catalogue, you've yeah. got a lot more than the majority of artists have got like um, yeah. we've witnessed, you know, hundred songs there on your computer that you've done. Like how, have, like what, what motivation keeps you going? What inspirations? How have you managed to get hundred songs fully done on your computer that you've done yourself? What's pursued you to do that? What inspired you? Do you know what? Just like working with people and like I don't like to wait around. If the track can get done there and then, like if if we record, we record the vocals there. We record like ten tracks in a day and we can master them in the future, in the near future, it don't matter. As long as, while you're there in the zone, get all the lyrics down, and that, and, like, we done, I had a YouTube page where we had, a, a, I think it was 128 videos, and we deleted that, just because we just didn't want that as the image, so, that had, like, 70,000 views on it, and, obviously not major, but, it just wasn't the image, it was average, you know, and obviously, there's a lot of average people out there, so, Got to stand out of the crowd. So yeah, that's why you're going, yeah, going back and doing my best and trying to get the best sound as well. Because like people say, you got to go to a studio. But I just done it in my bedroom. Do you think you found your sound now, or do you think you're still trying to find it? Yeah. Well, mm, to the artists out there that that want to know, they think they can maybe go into a studio and find their sound over, a, say, a weekend or hearing no, a few artists. Like, you can do that. Or, you need, what, to, what you need to do like mixtapes and mixtapes and see what tracks sound good with you and then on top of that you need to see what's, what tracks sound good in the club and then what people are like listening to if you're going to do the grime tracks you've got to make sure it's the grime it's about and not do some like average something if you're going to do pop music you've got to make sure it's cheesy not cheesy but like you've got the hooks that you need and stuff like that you've got to make sure you do 100% in whatever you do basically. If you're gonna be grimy, be grimy. If it's gonna be sad, you gotta make sure people are gonna be in tears. And that's it basically. Um, what was your highlight in your career so far? Uh, well, I've done, I've done warm ups for loads of people. I've done warm up for P Money, done, that was good. I've done warm up for Skepta, done loads of. I don't know, like some my, some my stuff. I like just, do you know, highlight for me is. Um, basically finishing my album, producing my album myself. Apart from my like, two tracks, Lewis Green produced, which is big. He's a big producer. But like that, that for me was the first thing because obviously when I did my first mixtape, that was a highlight. But then when you do, when you've done your mixtape and you're on like four or five mixtapes, then you want to do your own and you you know produce your own sound. And I, and I recorded it myself. 
in my bedroom and it's going, it's going on iTunes as well. So we sold some copies of the first single and we're going to do, well you're going to be featured on one of the tracks of the album as well. So we've got a big collab. That's going to be big. So basically the album's called No Time For Sleep because I was up every night for like a month straight just mastering, recording. So I said No Time For Sleep. I was a busy guy. Sick. Literally up for all night. <laughs> So for the people out there, you need to put the work in to get the work out, right? Definitely. Yeah. Who's your influencers musically? Uh, I say, what do you mean like UK or US? Worldwide, dead, alive, anybody. Like, just I don't know, I'm just trying to get inside your musical head there, like, what influences you to? Well, when I was younger, I used to, I got, um, someone bought me All Eyes on Me album. I was, and I learned every single lyric pretty much off that. I was, what? I thought I knew every day, you know, I was listening to it all the time, so that was a, that was a big album. Then I got, um, I think same time, I got the Eminem's first album, or well, the first major one that he released, when he was like proper crazy, so that was like an influence then. And then Dizzy, Boy in the Corner, that was it. These are literally the only albums that I've bought in my life, like, <laughs> so, or well, that I've ever gone and got all the rest of this been downloaded, so. Um, what else we got? This, I don't know, this. The US artists as well, they're good because some of them, like, were massive now when maybe they shouldn't be, but some of them, you know, other people who are saying, like, chatting real sense and getting, like, edgeways. I used to listen to Dead Press a lot. They're, they're big. Um, who else? Far Side. And I just love all hooks and that, so for me, I like. You need a singer. So I was thinking that all those people that like they, well, most of the people, they always good with the choruses. So maybe that's where I get my choruses from. Yeah. And you write, produce all your own stuff? Yeah, make beats, sampling. That's what that's what my, my favourite thing, but like people might listen to the samples and I think, oh, no, that's shit, or you shouldn't have done that, or it sounds cheesy. But when you're sampling, there's no point, like, if you get uh, a cheesy tune, there's no point, like, going grimy on it because it's just going to sound weird so you need to do fucking, you need to do the cheesiest shit you can really not cheesy you know like it, it needs to you, every tone that I do you've got to set the track set the, set the tone of it like every track so and that's what I try and do and I just I used to be just like I spit all sorts of bad stuff like horrible stuff and, like, obviously you just want some stuff that's going to be played really so just start going not commercial, but like, it's it's easy to make a horrible sound, and it's easy to make something come out just you know nasty. And someone go, oh that's gritty, and it's not. It's really it's just fucking. It just sounds horrible, and then like it's hard to make something sound nice, and someone go, oh yeah that's it. I'm liking that, or oh, that hooks big or whatever. And then like that's when that's good, but you know, seats are the wrong in it. Um, so, so what's what would you say is the next step for you? Next step. Well, we started the label. We have a couple of artists signed. We got a uh, mixtape that's coming out. Basically, what we want to do is we want to start doing gigs. We want to start get. We got standing solo TV as well. That's up. We've got three stars from like loads of different artists. We've got Cold in the Road. We've got loads of stuff. My album's coming. We're doing videos for that, uh, we're just non-stop, literally we got like booked up all the time, we're trying to like make space and that to go film people and uh, yeah we're just doing all sorts of moments, so at the moment like there isn't an end, we just like keep going and just see it, it's just keep going basically, yeah. So anything else you want to quickly say before we sign out to all you people out there watching? Uh, yeah, basically check out the mixtapes. We've got Standing Solo 1, 2, 3, 4. We've got Subliminal Messages. And look out for my album, No Time For Sleep. And keep watching. Loot the mic.